first, uh, I'll just quickly introduce myself. My name's uh, Alexander Beverly. I'm a business developer at Brock Solutions. And today we're gonna chat a little bit about uh, Ignition as a water SCADA. So today's presentation, take the plus on, on a couple different things. Because initially, initially we, we, we started this conversation as, as how are we using Ignition as a water SCADA? And we very quickly realized, well, you know, it's, we're actually doing quite a bit more than SCADA in water and, and particularly with ignition. So what we kind of figure is maybe we'll take you out of the ignition world for a bit and we'll pull you into the Brock Solutions world. So again, you know, I'll be your host today. And I'm also going to be joined by, uh, actually Brent had to uh, had to step out of this this meeting for another. I'll have uh, Gabriel Lee joining me as a, uh, as a technical lead and an ignition specialist here at uh, Brock Solutions. So if uh, if any uh, anyone has any uh, tough uh, you know stump the sales guy type questions in the Q and A, uh, we've got Gabe here to, to certainly give you a nice technical answer. So some of the topics we're going to touch today is I'll introduce you to, to Brock Solutions, let you know who we are and what we do, and from there we'll migrate a bit and we'll talk about what our perspective is on the water and wastewater industry and how some of our customers are. Uh, are approaching modernization and, and digitization and, uh, and, and really what successes they're seeing, particularly with the use of Ignition. Talk a bit more broadly about why Ignition is attractive to the, the water and wastewater industry and, and we'll leave you with a couple takeaways for, uh, for water authorities and, and anyone else who's looking to kick off that journey uh, or that digital, digital upgrade journey. So just to start off, Brock Solutions has been in the infra, uh, the automation and IT industry for over 30 years. Uh, and to our knowledge, we're the biggest independent global integrator in the digital real-time space. And, and over the years, we've, we've established offices across North and all across North America, and, and we've expanded into Europe, and, and now you can even find us in Australia. So we have a little bit over 600 uh, employees, mostly located in Kitchener, Ontario and Dallas, Texas, uh, which also happens to be where we operate two panel shops. And in total, we've got about 60,000 square feet of, of fabrication space between the two. But to take more of a macro lens and you know, when I reflect on our company, I, I think the most defining characteristic and what really separates us from others in the system integration world, uh, it's the fact that we're both SCADA and software. So so we're experts in marrying the IT side and the OT side. Now, it's not unlike what the team at Inductive Automation is doing with Ignition. So no surprise, we, we came to find each other. Uh, but Brock is very much a relationship-focused organization. We're not a one-and-done type shop. We like to get to know our customers, we deliver an exceptional solution, and we continue to provide value through ongoing sustainment offerings, which you know, could include operation and maintenance, continuous improvement, all, all that good stuff. But their goal is to support our customers and, and making sure they're meeting their business goals uh, and, and we're providing them that real-time technological foundation for which they can build off. Uh, we've also we've been working with inductive automation for several years now and, and we've achieved the top level of partner, so your premier integrator. Um, but additionally, we're also the inaugural enterprise uh, integrator partner. And, and this is a program that we were essential in defining and creating and, and building alongside the, uh, the team over at Inductive Automation. So we've got lots of experience with uh, uh, Inductive Automation, lots of experience with uh, uh, the Ignition platform, and, and we're certainly excited to share that with you today. So we'll just quickly jump over and we'll talk a bit about, on, on more of a broad scale, what we're seeing and hearing in the market. And we're in the we're in a fortunate position where we get to speak to a lot of participants in the industry and the water and wastewater industry. So it's a mixture of end users, so your municipalities or water authorities, uh, equipment vendors, mechanical and process engineering firms, of course, general contractors. So we get a, all these unique viewpoints and opinions, and, and we've kind of distilled them down into some of the questions you will see in front of you. So starting from the top left, uh, we often hear that our systems are obsolete. You know, as we uh, tend to ask a couple questions and we dig a little bit, we also find out that you know, that client hasn't invested in those systems in 15 years and, and now they're paying the price. Uh, so this tends to be, that's that operational catalyst for us. And that is really what drives that, that end user to connect with us and, and start to take the steps to, to amending the, the obsolescence issue. Now, of course, obsolescence has all kinds of issues associated with it, like maintainability, uh, reliability and and that's typically associated with you know lack of parts available or lack of support uh, but of course cybersecurity is a really big piece of that too older systems are just easier to exploit 
So it's it's vitally important to 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 keep this in mind when you're when you're you're considering next steps for your automation system. Another common pain point we we get is is we need more modern functionality and we want some fresh ideas. So many of the systems that we've up, uplifted and are currently uplifting, or some of them are pushing 30 years old. And as you know, a, a lot has changed over the past three decades. And in fact, a lot's changed over the last five years. These systems can no longer be static. There has to be some kind of, of continuous improvement uh, program in place. And, and this will take numerous forms. It's all it's a very customer specific offering, very customer specific need. And there's there's no one size fits all. Uh, maintenance, of course, is another area where uh, many municipalities seek to become less re reactionary and more proactive. And we're working with uh, uh, numerous partners in space, uh, inductive automation included, uh, just to find ways to, to help municipalities and, and water authorities get more to that proactive side. Real-time connectivity uh, and visibility shows up on uh, customer wish lists quite frequently. Uh, when, it jumped, when it comes to providing value to our customers, this tends to be an area where we can not only uh, show value to the customer, but they can immediately reap the benefits. And really, I think this tends to be, like I mentioned, is really high on customer wish lists. It's, it's, it was surprising to us when we came into the, uh, you know, as we've been in this industry, and, and it's something that not everybody has. And it's, it's, it's for a system, a essential service, an essential utility like a water system, uh, it was very surprising and it continues to be surprising that we don't see this more often. Water and wastewater processes, they generate lots of information, uh, much of which is being captured and, and stored in the form of data, but from there it's often forgotten about or, or in some cases underused. So we really identified this as uh, a major problem area uh, right across the industry and we're working to help our customers uh, better utilize that data they already have or, or in some cases better collect uh, 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 information and data from their from their plant floor and help them solve some some of their operational challenges. And of course, Ignition's been a fantastic tool uh, in helping us work with our customers to design, develop, and deliver these solutions right inside the Ignition platform. Uh, so lastly, with virtually every every customer we speak with, uh, the topic of are we cyber secure inevitably arises. So for some, this is a critical factor driving modernization. You know, for others, it's it's maybe found a place in the back of their mind. But either way, it's an unavoidable question municipalities have to ask themselves when they're reviewing their critical in infrastructure. But to summarize all this, and in, in our opinion, it, it all kind of rolls up to this this need and and rightful need for safe, secure, and reliable water systems. And whenever we approach an engagement or whenever we're working with a customer, this this is kind of that underlying theme that we always keep in mind. So with all, all those questions in mind, and, and we'll shift a bit to how we're actually approaching and how we're helping solve some of these problems uh, in the water and wastewater industry. So first, we're really helping customers leverage their data and produce better reports So uh, and generate more effective analytics that helps them make more informed decisions. Uh, so just some examples of this recently, uh, uh, we helped the customer using Ignition to solve a problem like uh, historical and real-time cost of water. Uh, for them, this was a big transformational problem, big transformational question they were trying to get a, re a resolution to, and we were able to work out a solution in Ignition that would be able to deliver that data to them. Um, similar on the wastewater side, we've also provided a predictive capacity planning uh, application. And again, it's it's a it's a very transformational project uh, uh, project that's going to help our customer redefine operational best practices going forward. Also, heavily involved uh, helping our customers develop and refine engineering standards. Now, this is an area where we have quite a bit of experience spanning multiple multiple industries, uh, but so far we've we've got a couple observations that I think have been true throughout our our tenure in the industry is, is first, a lot of municipalities just don't have engineering standards. It's, and we see this as a major issue for maintenance and, and support. Um, and for those who do have uh, standards, they're, they're really holistic. They're often designed and developed in, in isolation. Uh, we firmly believe your PLC, your HMI, and your electrical standards should all be developed in harmony and they should all play and work together. Um, so we think this, this call it an oversight kind of limits the operational effectiveness of, of these water and wastewater systems. So 
we're really coming to market with a holistic standards package that are that's developed using best practices across water and wastewater and and other critical industries. Uh, security is another highly complex topic, but uh, for the purpose of this, at a high level, we're really focused on delivering holistic uh, cybersecurity solutions. So that's that's kind of blending your information technology, your operational technology, and that physical security layer, and getting them all communicating together, working together, uh, again, all in that ho uh, holistic, modern automation solution. Uh, compliance, of course, uh, it's a heavily regulated industry, so this is a major, major bucket, uh, and it often often crosses over with the analytics and reporting piece. But much, most of our focus is on automating that capture of information from the plant or from the floor, capture that into data, and then present that data in a way that's easily consumable with minimal interaction required by the operator. So that the bottom line of this is, it's really how do we save you time in your reporting process. And as uh, I discussed a bit earlier, obsolescence tends to be that uh, catalyst that initiates our conversations. But what we tend to find is we'll start the conversation around obsolescence, and then we'll very quickly realize, you know, perhaps standardization's a, a, a big piece of the, of the puzzle, or or maybe cybersecurity. And we tend to start to pull from these other other buckets and other areas uh, in our process of developing and helping the customer get that holistic final solution. Now, smart utilities, this is a really fun, interesting topic, and it's totally pervasive right across our business. Um, and with Ignition, what we found is you can really go beyond SCADA and you can cross into that world of, of Internet of Things, you know, IoT, and so that could be analytics, machine learning, and, and all that fun stuff. Uh, but I'll talk about this a little bit more because this is a particularly important topic. Uh, so, so I'll circle back uh, later in the presentation. And lastly, uh, O and M, of course, it's, it's a big focus for this industry, and it's and for us personally, and and for our uh, our company, it's it's a big strategy piece because uh, we're very focused again on those big long-term relationships. Uh, and, and frankly, a modern automation system, like I mentioned before, is dynamic. It needs to always have that uh, uh, some degree of of, of, of uh, updating and, and maintenance. So just to wrap this slide up, really Ignition's touching and Ignition's helping us solve all these problems in, in all kinds of, of different unique ways. So uh, in the next two slides, I'll show you how an example of how we're doing that in, in the wastewater industry, and I'll, I'll show you a, a water one as well. So this uh, this particular customer, they uh, they operate two uh, two massive wastewater treatment plants uh, with a, a combined capacity of 612 cubic meters. And uh, I'll let I'll let our American friends uh, handle the the imperial conversion on that one. But uh, over the years, this this customer has, has collected all these disparate uh, vendor installed systems throughout the two plants. Uh, and so we were engaged to redesign the controls environment and start to consolidate the number of controllers out in the field, and of course make all the associated documentation updates as well. But most importantly. This project involved bringing both facilities up to the client's pre-existing engineering standards. So again, that very important piece of, of having those standards in place. There's also significant scope of work uh, surrounding a, a physical security upgrade um, at the two plants and a, and a couple of other wastewater sites throughout their network. And the goal of these upgrades is to bring the same level of standardization to the security system as to what's gonna be, what's gonna be done in the automation system. So Ignition comes into play as the enterprise SCADA uh, of which the consolidation scope is gonna be integrated. And due to the pure size and complexity of the project and along with the phys uh, physical security piece as well, it was important for the customer to select a partner with, with experience deploying an enterprise uh, version of, of Ignition. So a really big value add that we brought to the table is that intimate knowledge of, of both best practices in uh, the automation space and in Ignition deployment, especially at that enterprise level. So jumping over to the water side, this, this is a, a, just a brief example of a water system we're currently uplifting. Um, and, and this is a, this is a particularly interesting one for us, uh, but we got we got started with the customer several months ago uh, after they were looking for some help in solving some obsolescence issues uh, across their environment. Uh, and they also uh, the, they had some cybersecurity concerns. So they brought in a cybersecurity consultant 
uh, who actually uh, alerted them to some security gaps that, that were quite critical and needed to be addressed. Um, so we were pulled in and, and uh, asked to assist in, in redesigning the, the SCADA system and, and really focusing on that forward-looking perspective. Um, so we be began with a consultative master planning exercise. Uh, we evaluated the current landscape and identified some of the areas that needed attention. Uh, and as part of the master plan, our, our team went out and met with stakeholders right across the organization. So we had a great understanding of, of what that holistic future state meant to them. Um, from there, we started to compile a list of needs, wants, and, and we even incorporated a lot of their, uh, their future strategic considerations that were you know, five, six, seven, eight years down the pipeline. So through that consultative master planning exercise, uh, the customer, we delivered a go forward plan and, and a roadmap of how to execute that plan. So they actually got a tangible, this is how you do it output from the, the exercise. And now we're moving on to the next phase of that project where we're actually gonna do that uplift uh, for them. Uh, so you can see some of the services we'll be providing here on the screen, but uh, just mind you, keep in mind, this is a full turnkey implementation, soup to nuts. Uh, this is just a small subsect of some of the items in the entire scope. So the future state for, for this customer includes an ignition uh, SCADA system, an enterprise SCADA system, uh, as well as numerous PLC. Uh, there's some drive upgrades and some sensing hardware as well. Um, but, and we'll also be heavily involved in the ongoing support of the system and some continuous uh, improvements as well. And continuous improvements will look, it'll be both on the SCADA side and a lot of that on the IoT side where we're starting to solve some of those unique problems uh, facing the municipality. And, and while I'm on the slide, I'll, I'll just quickly emphasize, if you're listening to this and you're thinking, you know, how do I, how do I even get started with Ignition or how do I, how do, I do this? Um, we, we worked with this customer from basically that stage from wasn't sure where to get started, wasn't sure where to go, and, and we kind of walked with them right through the process of planning and, and, and eventually delivering a, forward, a plan for a forward-looking SCADA strategy. Um, so, so if you have that, uh, questions like that, feel free to reach out to, to myself or uh, anyone at Brock or, or of course, Inductive Automation. They're, they're well suited to, to help with that question. So just to summarize uh, what makes Brock different and how we're approaching this industry, over the years, we've, we've really noticed that water and wastewater is it's somewhat like a small town. So everybody knows each other, you know, they know who's good at what, who's in some cases, who's not so good at what. Uh, and it's really very relationship based and, and the status quo is very much ingrained in the industry. And now that's not a fault, it's, it's just a nature of the industry, um, but we're really looking to change that. So through all this experience, we've, we've noticed that investments in technology and infrastructure haven't really gotten the same attention as some other municipal services. Uh, but again, this is changing. We're seeing a lot of municipalities investing really big to replace these legacy systems uh, and to leverage industry 4.0 technologies. So their size and, and our breadth of service offerings, uh, we can stay involved from early stage consultation through to commissioning and, and of course ongoing with sustainment and maintenance. We're really focused on what's your big picture, where do you want to go, and, and what do you need beyond the confines of SCADA, and we really focus on delivering that holistic turnkey solution. And of course, Ignition's been an excellent tool in bridging this, uh, this the, the IT and the OT or the SCADA IoT gap, and it really lets us deploy a variety of unique solutions that are perfectly suited to our customers' needs. So going on that, our, our company really has a unique methodology that we've been developing over the last 30 years of working in critical industries, particularly water and wastewater. Uh, we have a unique project management approach that handles large, complex, multi-million dollar projects uh, with a, very much with a value first approach. And we realize that municipalities, they tend to be in, especially right now, in, in a financial, a tough financial position with typical revenue streams drying up. So we're very much dedicated to finding a way to drive value, reduce costs, uh, and get in early on, uh, help plan that out right from the ground floor. Uh, IO simulation also is a, a, a very essential part of our project management. We use it for not only for testing, but to reduce risk during uh, commissioning. Uh, and we've been we've been using IO simulation for decades. It's core to our company, but you know, it's when we actually came like as we've we've done more and more work in the industry, we found that it's it's in a lot of cases it's totally foreign to a lot of our our customers. Uh, and even now we've, we've started to advance that and we're starting to use ignition for our simulation. 
So uh, if, if you take a look on the screen, you can see uh, this is just a demo or, or a video of some of our guys doing uh, some testing. Uh, and, and you'll see close to the end of the video, we've got all the PLCs set up in the racks as they would be out in the field. Uh, and our team's there with the customer walking through the, you know, all the various testing procedures. Uh, and you also see a nice quote from one of our customers, uh, James. Uh, he, he likened that our testing environment to the real deal. And this, this is what we strive for uh, in, in that process. So to wrap up, what we're, makes us different is we're just looking for fresh, modern, new ideas to bring bring to our clients and bring to bring to the industries where we're active in. Uh, and, and frankly, Ignition was one of these. You know, we we identified them years ago as as a as a fantastic tool, and we saw the value proposition early on. Um, you know, we've been working with them ever since, and now we're doing really big stuff with them and and water and wastewater and beyond. So we'll switch gears a little bit over to the technology now and, and why it matters and why it's relevant in the water and wastewater industry. So right off the bat, there are some clear benefits, in particular the licensing model. Uh, you purchase Ignition by the server rather than by the seat. You, you benefit hugely from uh, you know, unlimited tags, clients, connections. And when you put that in the perspective of a municipality, especially one that likely has a lot of cookie cutter sites, you know, a pump site is a pump site. This generally expedites your deployment. So right from ground zero, you've got that ability and that freedom uh, to scale to your needs without racking up big subscription fees. And we'll touch on the cost savings later on, but they are significant, especially again in the context of a municipality where you know there's a lot of people who may need to, to access that system. Uh, the other big benefit is Ignition's an open platform using you know, open standards and technologies like SQL, uh, Python, MQTT. Uh, it makes it simple to work with and it's familiar for the next generation of engineers who are starting to enter the municipal space and have grown up, you know, went to university and uh, done all this and have worked on these technologies before. So combine that with Ignition's ability to connect to everything. This creates an invaluable pairing for the water and wastewater industries where there, there's this vast array of technologies out in the field, and many of which have limited or, or no ongoing support. And of course, mobile ready, I, I figure this one's a no brainer, doesn't need too much explanation, but it's, if you can have an operator who's remote out in the field, driving around and has virtually the same level of data and control as somebody sitting in the head office, you know, it, it's got the potential to save an immense amount of time and, and consequently a lot of money. Now, smart water. So this this is such a fun area for us. And really, there's two we we have two perspectives on smart water. So you can call it say a micro uh, micro perspective, and that would be say a, a water authority upgrading their SCADA system and starting to integrate various IoT technologies. You know, integrating advanced analytics, predictive trending, you know, all that good stuff. But you could also look on the macro view, and that's when it'd be integration of citywide systems. So recent, a recent uh, example of this I was given um, was a, a city that's trying to integrate their wastewater system with their traffic and their transit systems. So they can they know where people are traveling in the city and they can adjust the wastewater system uh, accordingly to, uh, uh, to make sure it's not overrun. Lastly, using several uh, uh, communications mediums, it's extremely common in the industry. Uh, it's not uncommon for sites to be hardwired uh, some sites to be hardwired and, and you know other sites to be uh, to be remote enough where it's a radio or cellular uh, you know and even in some cases and we've seen it a couple times it's even unreachable by a, a electrical utility so you're relying on solar based system being able to support all these medium mediums flawlessly is just vitally important and we've had great success doing this with ignition and actually uh, and while i'm while i'm here i'll just quickly th i'll throw in a comment um, just from a customer we're, we're in early stage uh, stages with. So there are, it's a very large U.S. Uh, East, East Coast U.S. city that's beginning to look at options to uplift their SCADA. Uh, and the, the city SCADA group, so they actually, you know, boots on the ground guys, they're totally on board with Ignition. They know the value proposition. Uh, they understand the, the value. Of, and one of the lead engineers told me that what he really loves about the platform is if somebody comes to him and asks for a new feature, He's going to be able to create it. He knows there's one way or another he's going to be able to do it with Ignition, but that's not so much not so much the case with the current legacy system, which has been causing a couple issues. Um, so it's just a comment. It's been on my mind. I figure this, this if there's anywhere to share it, this is probably it.
Now I'll just quickly run through these. Uh, these are just uh, an example of a couple screens that we've developed for one of our customers. Um, what I want to highlight is, is uh, there's lots of data being presented and updated all in real time right across the water system. Um, and here we have the ability to integrate maps and layer in data and all this can be done in real time and, and it's unhindered like the you're able to do the same thing on the mobile screens as well, which I, I'll show you in the next slide. And lastly, 3D graphics. I mean, these are just really modern, visually pleasing uh, interfaces that, that operators are demanding now. Here's an example of some mobile support. It's, it's very similar. You get everything real time, right to your pocket or right to your tablet. Uh, and you have the same, almost the same level of control you would from a from a, a actual centralized control system or sorry, control site. So with that in mind, we'll shift gears one more time and over to uh, over to some of the numbers and and really that that uh, business case and that value proposition and and why a lot of these municipalities are starting to make the switch to ignition. So we'll look at uh, we'll actually look at a, a customer that we performed a large. Uh, implementation for and, and after we completed the project we went back and did a benefits capture and we recorded some pretty interesting data points um, so first and I don't think this will be of any if for anyone on the line who's familiar with ignition already uh, this won't be any surprise to you um, but generally when we get into when we introduce ignition the cost delta we record is somewhere around that 70 percent less than the exist than the old legacy system and and we've seen this across industries water and wastewater is certainly no different Second, uh, th this was an interesting finding. So when the, the customer was rolling out uh, global or enterprise-wide template changes, uh, it used to be a really labor-intensive process, but after switching over to Ignition, it was reduced to a matter of minutes. Uh, and it was done simply by, before, by clicking a button. So weeks to minutes, it was an incredible change. Prior to in, uh, implementing Ignition, the customer had a, a, a team of three engineers and they would go around, they'd spend a whole day making sure that their system came back up online and was working correctly after maintenance. Uh, and, and now we've shifted that so they have a dashboard that displays a system-wide status in five minutes. So again, huge, huge, huge amount of time being saved. Uh, as we kept digging, uh, we also found that the time expenditure to upgrade legacy technology uh, used to take weeks and weeks of testing, but with Ignition, we observed that time expense falling by upwards of 90%. So it was, it was just immense. Uh, of course, uh, again, if you're familiar with Ignition, this won't be a surprise to you. Annual maintenance fell considerably. Uh, and actually, their licensing outflows, so what they're spending on licenses, fell by 80,000. So it's a, it's a huge, huge number. And lastly, overall, we've noticed that development time for new functionality tends to be reduced by about 25% when you when you switch over to Ignition. Um, so again, everybody, you know, like my, my friend I was just telling you about from uh, from that big U.S. city, like he, he knows this firsthand and he's, uh, this is what he's, he's pushing for. Uh, this is another customer where we, we performed another sizable ignition deployment uh, and, and they actually saw $225,000 a year in savings just on their software maintenance fees and they actually realized a further $100,000 cost avoidance. Uh, in year one, and that was just from leveraging uh, uh, Ignition for some new functionality. And again, I'm a broken record, but if you're familiar with Ignition, it's, this is probably no surprise to you. But uh, the bottom line is financial benefits from making the switch can be sub uh, very substantial. So just to kind of close out on, on where Brock and Ignition fit in this, uh, uh, in this environment, hopefully by now it's it's become apparent that we're approaching this industry from a different angle uh, we're really focused on providing turnkey enterprise level solutions and leveraging our experience both in water and wastewater and, and beyond in other industries our company has uh, like i showed you we have over 600 engineers and software developers on staff so our company is purpose built to deliver these large multi-million dollar you know, large-scale multi-site turnkey automation programs. And we like to get involved early on. We were very much, uh, we very much value that early consultative process and, and guiding our customers through the entire process right to the end. And of course, after that, we'd like to you know, stick around and continue to support you through uh, O&M and other continuous improvement measures. Uh, obviously, we're bringing innovation to the table. We're always vetting new technology. You know, we're always developing 
uh, innovative new methods to tackle complex problems and, and, and quite often with the support of, of uh, inductive uh, automation and the ignition platform. So hopefully you can see, and hopefully now you see we're, we're innovating water and wastewater together and winning big. I think lastly, it's, it's important to highlight we've, we've got a fantastic partnership with inductive automation. We've been helping each other grow, helping each other find better solutions, uh, to just everyday problems in the water and wastewater industry and, and of course beyond. Just to wrap up, I want to leave you with a couple guiding principles, um, particularly for anyone who's coming from a water or a wastewater authority who's, who's just trying to find a way to jumpstart and, and you know, or kickstart their own automation up, uh, uplift. So first is, is obsolescence is a real problem in water and wastewater that typically stems from underinvestment. So don't, don't let this get in the way of your smart water journey. There's no shortcut, uh, shortage of people who have ventured down this path. Uh, with the right help, it, it doesn't have to be a painful experience. Always keep in mind the technology landscape and, and integration approach. It's really changed when it comes to water. So if, if you do decide to use ignition, it's it's far from the first time it's been used in this industry. There's there's so many examples of municipalities, both big and small, who are realizing immense benefits. And just to elaborate on this a little bit, uh, Brock, as a company, we're we're a vendor neutral integrator. We work with all kinds of different par uh, partners right throughout uh, our business. But in water, we genuinely believe there's a huge value to using ignition. We've, we've just seen it so many times firsthand. It's something we're very, very uh, passionate about. And lastly, uh, take the plunge. If I haven't made it clear enough, vet the technology, look at the benefits, look at the price. Uh, it's definitely worth your while. So that's uh, that wraps up everything today. I, I hope you guys found it interesting. I, I hope it answered some questions or inspired you to start your own journey. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. My contact information's there. Uh, you can always reach us at our website, brocksolutions.com, uh, and, and contact us through, uh, through there. And of course, special thanks to uh, the guys at Inductive Automation uh, for the invite and, and allowing us to come and share our story and what we're doing. And uh, we're certainly looking forward to, to doing more of this in the future. And, and for everybody watching or everybody listening, we've, we've got some great con uh, content coming up in the next few weeks. So uh, uh, keep an eye on the, uh, the Inductive Automation website and you'll certainly be uh, hearing some more of us. Looks like we're all set. Thanks again to everybody for listening and, and participating and uh, certainly keep an eye out for us on the next one. Thanks.